Hello, I'm Richard Murphy and I want to talk about something that is not in the usual run of these videos but about universities in 2021. Now I know something about universities. I was a professor at City University in London for five years and I'm now a visiting professor there and at the University of Sheffield and at Anglia Ruskin University. So I've some experience in this area apart from being a person who also is a father of sons who are at university. What am I concerned about? Everybody, of course, knows about the A-level crisis of 2020 created by the failure of a marking algorithm to appropriately reward grades to the students who couldn't take their exams this year. The consequence of that failure has been that many students, and I mean many but not all because BTECs are still not resolved, many students have been awarded their teacher assessed grades and as a result there appears to be grade inflation in 2020 and more students might go to university this year than would otherwise have expected to do so. Now that I stress is a good thing because we are facing an unemployment crisis in the UK and frankly to train our young people at this moment to be better prepared for the future and to defer their employment for a while is great because they've got very few other opportunities elsewhere. So I'm not for a moment regretting the fact that we're going to have increased demand for university places in 2020 and everyone should celebrate that fact in my opinion. But it is deeply disruptive. It's deeply disruptive of universities in 2020 because the best universities will have too many students and that is going to impose the most awful crisis upon them with regard to space and simply finding the staff to do the teaching. And that, I assure you, is not easy. And secondly, it's going to impose a crisis for those universities who might actually not get the students whose grades have now been upgraded and therefore will not get the grades that would have previously sent them to well, what are considered to be the lower grade universities in the UK. And they might have a corollary crisis to those of the best universities. They'll have too few students. Now, some of their staff, of course, might simply be able to move to other places, but that might give them a funding crisis, which means they're not available for the future. But I'm more concerned about what happens in 2021. We don't know that exams will be taken in 2021 as yet. No one can know. No one can know whether a similar algorithm to that which failed this year can be created successfully for next year. Nobody knows whether a reliable basis for teacher appraisal can be also created next year when it's a repeat of this year and therefore teachers know that there are incentives to inflate grades. Nobody can know how universities will react to this op potential problem arising from there not being proper grades next year. And nobody will know what will also happen to those who apply even if everything runs as normal in the past in 2021, but where students will have to compete with those who have deferred their places from 2020 simply because there aren't enough places at university in September 2020. So chaos is going to continue and in fact that's going to be the case for some time to come because not only were A-level grades affected in 2020 so were C GCSE grades and the consequence of that is that many more students will be taking A-levels as from September 2020 than we expected and that will upset the gradings for admissions at universities from 2022 because people who were not expected to take A-levels will, and all the grades that will result from that process may be unpredictable as well. Now, what are we going to do in this circumstance in higher education? The point is important, not just for the universities, but to understand that this is just one of the indications that we have that the impact of coronavirus is going to last for a very long time. Now, my reaction is to suggest that what this means is that we need to rethink education. We need to rethink education from beginning to end. We need, literally, to ask some very profound questions. I'll start at the beginning. Why are we taking GCSEs 
is the first and most obvious question I can ask. Very, very few young people now leave education at 16 because they're expected to stay until 18 unless they go into some form of vocational training. So for most young people, GCSEs are not now an essential part of life. Yes, we do need there to be a certificate of basic competence in English and in maths and perhaps in some form of reasoning which is not taught at present, because those things are critical life experience skills that people have to have. And when I talk about English, I talk about applied English. When I talk about maths, I talk about the sort of maths that people will need to go into the workplace at 16, which is most certainly not algebra and not trigonometry, but would focus upon basic statistics and, for example, the ability to understand percentages, which the vast majority of our politicians don't seem to have. And we're talking about reasoning because, actually, people do have to work out problem solving, and yet it's not regularly taught. A-levels or their equivalents, and I'm a firm believer in BTECs, by the way, in vocational training, then become much more important. But are they at present taught appropriately? Are we still too narrowly focused? Shouldn't we be looking about a broader basis of teacher-based training and non-exam-based criteria for awarding marks to students at 18? If, after all, Teachers have been able to award all A-level and BTEC awards for 2020. Why are we relying on exams alone for 2021 onwards if everything returns to whatever normal might be? That makes no sense. We know that teachers now know their students best, and we've discovered that we can pretty much rely on them. So why aren't we now talking about a combination of coursework and maybe some exams? in the future as a quality control process, but by no means relying only on exams, which is the direction of travel in which this government has taken us for the last few years. And what is a university meant to be about? Is it right that people have to choose a subject at 18 that is so academically focused that they are in some senses constrained for life by the choices they made at university? I don't believe it is. And if I'm honest, from what I've seen at universities, I'm not even sure that what they teach is necessarily appropriate. Now, I went into universities late in life. I was invited to join a university as what is called a professor of practice, which means that I went in because I had experience in the area which I was teaching, rather than because I had a PhD in it, and I don't have a doctorate, although I could have because of the number of academic papers I've now published. But my point is that I am concerned that the whole purpose of a university education is not to really learn, but to simply learn yet again how to write an essay in a particular style. Is that useful? Do we need to train young people to simply learn how to quote other people's work appropriately with the right form of referencing in order to get a first class degree? I'm not convinced. I remember my students liking the fact that in my course I encouraged them to look at a wider range of sources and they felt liberated by that in a way that most courses did not let them do. I want us to think about how universities can become broader based places for learning about how to take the ability to think into real world situations and at present that's not what they're doing. We have a crisis for admissions in 2021, therefore. We have a crisis on teaching from 2021 because almost certainly the spillover from 2020 will continue for some time to come. And as I've noted already, the 2022 intake is already impacted. So my point is this, we're facing a crisis in 2020 where many universities will be financially threatened by what is happening. We're facing a crisis in 2021 because admissions will still be heavily impacted by what is happening. And we're facing a crisis in 2022 when the current GCSE results flow through. But the crisis is much bigger than that. The crisis is really about what do we want education to achieve in the world after coronavirus? 
And I'm not seeing people ask that question as yet, because what this whole fiasco of results proves is that teachers can grade our pupils. Teachers do know them, and they see qualities which the exam system cannot find. We're going to need those qualities to deal with the world after coronavirus. We need to ask questions about the future of our education system, and we need to start asking them now, because the exam-focused education structure that we've got at GCSE, at A-level, and at university is really not meeting our needs. Let's start talking about a new world of education to deal with the world that we're going to have. I'm Richard Murphy. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this video series on YouTube if you're interested. Also look for us on Facebook. I am on Twitter, at Richard J. Murphy. And at the same time, look at my blog, Tax Research UK, where you can find much more on these themes. And I'll see you again soon.